It is a region black holes might just be one of the most fascinating and mysterious phenomena in the universe. They are massive beasts in terms of power, but at the same time virtually invisible to us. A black hole weighing perhaps two to four million times the mass of the sun is almost beyond comprehension. But because of the research that has been put into them over the last couple of decades, we've gone from knowing absolutely nothing about them to getting to learn more and more up close and personal. And well, things have just gotten crazier. Michio Kaku just announced that we've finally gotten a look at what's inside a black hole, and this new information brings light to the details the world of science might have missed all along. Join us as we dig deeper into black holes and unveil what's inside. And if you're fascinated by space and science like this, make sure to subscribe so you never miss our deep dives into the mysteries of the universe. Before we get into the details of what Michio Kaku found, we have to talk about the firsts. Even though most of us have some idea what black holes are, there are still some gaps in the right information. You see, in 1916, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, which predicted the existence of black holes. At that time, the concept of black holes was purely theoretical. It took another 50 years for the scientific community to find evidence that black holes actually exist. This happened in the 1960s, when they were studying the Cygnus constellation and noticed an oddly bright blue star that was emitting X-rays. This star wasn't stagnant, but orbiting around a giant black something. Upon further investigation, it was found that the X-rays weren't just moving on their own, but were being sucked into the black object they were orbiting. Thus came the name black hole. This discovery was significant because it provided proof that black holes actually exist and were not just a figment of Albert Einstein's imagination. While that was great, it also meant that there was this unreal entity in space that we urgently needed to know more about, so researchers all around the world got to work. This black hole was named Cygnus X1, and it is located in the constellation Cygnus, about 6,000 light years from Earth. It was no small discovery. It's about 14 times more massive than the Sun and incredibly dense, which causes it to have a strong gravitational pull. The pull is so strong that not even light can escape it. This is why it is called a black hole. The concept of a black hole is both fascinating and terrifying. It is a region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Anything that gets too close to a black hole will be pulled into it, never to be seen again. But that aspect of danger makes it even more necessary to learn everything there is to know about them. Was this it, or were we just beginning? The answer ended up being the latter. After the discovery of Cygnus X1, scientists started to search for other black holes. They found that there may be close to over 100 million black holes in the Milky Way alone, but because they are so incredibly hard to detect, we still don't have an exact number. Nevertheless, from the looks of it, there are several million black holes in our very own galaxy, which makes them even more important to study. The main concern with black holes is always going to be gravity. Their gravitational pull is so intense that anything that enters compresses down astronomically until it becomes a singularity. In simpler terms, black holes are like cosmic vacuum cleaners that suck everything in. One of the scariest parts about the research into black holes is the fact that if someone were to fall into one, they would get stretched to the point of becoming a single line. This process would happen slowly, and the person would die before the final form sets in. So let's just say that no one should be stepping into one. But since they are all over the universe, could we really be in danger? Despite the fact that the closest black hole to Earth is 1,500 light-years away, it's still close enough to bring up questions and concerns. In 2021, scientists were able to release the first clear photograph of a black hole, specifically the M87 black hole. This black hole was photographed several nights in a row, and with each photograph, researchers gathered more and more evidence about it. They had to stitch the individual photos together to create something that filled all the gaps. This way they were able to figure out that there are three layers to a black hole. It's not just one single gaping hole of nothingness, as many people believe. Things are a lot more complicated than that. To even get to the nothingness part of a black hole, you have to make it through the first two layers. The first layer is called the event horizon. It is the point of no return. Once you pass the event horizon, there's no turning back and you will be sucked into the black hole. The second layer is the photon sphere, which is the region where light orbits the black hole. Any light that enters this region will be trapped 
and unable to escape the black hole's gravitational pull. Finally, we come to the third layer, which is the singularity. This is where everything that enters the black hole gets compressed down astronomically until it becomes a singularity. The singularity is a point in space-time where the laws of physics as we know them break down and we can't predict what happens next. At the singularity, the density is infinite and the laws of physics cease to exist. Now what makes all of this infinitely worse is the fact that every single black hole you study will be entirely different from the last. Sure, they tend to follow the same three-layer concept, but the way they function could be vastly different. If this were anything else, we'd just hop back on telescopes and study the problem at hand in detail. But with black holes, you can't really do that. Scientists can only study black holes indirectly by observing the radiation they emit and the gas and dust surrounding them. Sending a probe like Voyager inside a black hole is not possible because anything that enters the event horizon is pulled towards the singularity and compressed to an infinitely small point. The second a probe gets close enough, it would simply be crushed into nothingness. Because of this glaring problem, scientists are left with no option but to study these objects in a two-dimensional way, even though they are three-dimensional phenomena in reality. To make matters worse, every black hole is unique, and the laws of physics as we know them break down when we try to explore the inside. This means the traditional methods of scientific inquiry don't apply to black holes. That doesn't mean researchers haven't been busy. There are many theories and explanations, and with each one, things get more interesting. One compelling theory is that black holes are created from collapsed stars. When a star exhausts all of its fuel, it can no longer produce enough energy to counteract gravity. As a result, the star collapses in on itself, becoming smaller and denser. If the star is massive enough, this collapse continues until it becomes a singularity. To understand this more deeply, NASA scientists studied the core of galaxy. M87. Astronomers observed a super-powerful whirlpool of super-hot hydrogen gas spinning at an astonishing 1.2 million mph. The sheer force should have caused it to fly apart, but it didn't. Scientists deduced that a colossal mass, equal to 2 to 3 billion suns, had to be concentrated at the center. The only explanation, a black hole, but that's not the only theory. In 1963, New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr used Einstein's equations to describe a spinning black hole. Kerr showed that a spinning black hole wouldn't collapse into a single point, but into a ring of fire or a thin disk. This rapidly spinning disk, called the ergosphere, would be held in balance by centrifugal forces. Even more intriguing, Kerr's solution predicted the existence of an Einstein-Rosen bridge, also known as a wormhole. A wormhole is a theoretical passage through space-time connecting two distant points or even two universes. The idea suggests that instead of being crushed in a black hole, one might be funneled through to another region of space or even a parallel universe. To understand wormholes, we must recall Einstein's concept of space-time, a four-dimensional fabric warped by mass. Imagine a sheet of paper with two points and a line between them. Folding the paper brings the points closer, creating a shortcut. That's a wormhole. Though never observed directly, wormholes are real predictions of general relativity. They are thought to be unstable, collapsing almost instantly. But if they could exist, they might act as portals. However, the laws of physics as we know them, and especially Einstein's theory of relativity, still suggest faster than light travel is impossible. Physicists have speculated about Kerr wormholes for decades. These wormholes could act as tunnels, transporting someone to another universe or timeline, but critics argue they might be impossible to traverse because of radiation and quantum forces. Einstein's equations explain gravity, but not quantum mechanics. New theory, one unifying gravity and quantum theory is needed. This is often called a theory of everything. Michio Kaku has worked for decades on this, and the only promising candidate so far is superstring theory. Superstring theory proposes that subatomic particles are tiny vibrating strings, and the universe itself is a symphony of these vibrations. It unites Einstein's gravity with quantum theory and predicts exotic phenomena like black holes and wormholes. But here's the twist. Superstring theory requires ten dimensions of space-time, not the four we experience. 